Well, I know the La Liga sense in there brought plenty of emotions, joy, sadness, and the non-signing of Kylian Mbappe. But we're going to start with <laughs> the relegation battle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with the relegation battle. Let's be reasonable. <laughs> yeah, because because that was what really mattered this weekend. And yeah. my God, those 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 points of drama. I don't know what stuff. Because I watched it in La Liga goals. I was I was rooting for Granada to stay up. They looked like the, the side that had the best chance to stay up. They were the only side at home. How did they not stay up? Yeah, I feel the same way too because last week I remember discussing this and both of us kind of left Granada out of the relegation question because we felt like they would be able to get the job done against an Espanyol who haven't been at it for the last 10 games. But they couldn't because they missed chances. Poor old Molina was celebrating destroy Mallorca two weeks ago and now he's crying because he missed the penalty which was absolutely crucial. And yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty. It was pretty heartbreaking. I don't like to see Granada go down the way they did. Yeah, especially and their their side that they brought so much to La Liga, they brought some vibrancy, they brought joy, especially when they had Diego Martinez, who surprised everyone when he first came into the job. None of us knew pretty knew anything about him apart from that he was an assistant under United. His first season, he beats Barcelona at home. He gets Granada into the Europa League. In the Europa League, they do well. They knock out Napoli. And after he's gone, it's just, it's, it's just a rival for them. Robert Moreno yeah. didn't necessarily work out. The next manager, I felt they should, I felt maybe with a caretaker manager, maybe that's where they sort of messed up. They should have got some problems right away rather than stick with a caretaker for as long as they did. Yeah, I agree with you. Karanka really made a difference when he came in and you felt like they really missed the trick when they kept Ruben Torresia for as long as they did. And I saw a lot of Granada fans, they were really complaining during that period about the club's management because it felt like they should have taken more action on Robert Marino earlier, they should have appointed Karanka or anyone else earlier and now they've paid the price for bad decision making and yeah as you yeah. said it really shows how good Diego Martinez was that he took this team which is more or less the same as last season besides the absence of Kennedy and a couple yeah, of yeah, others yeah, yeah. yeah and they still like and they still were able to replace those players by bringing you Zuni and um, some other people but yeah. they're still done and it's, it felt like Granada just let's walk their way to the relegation zone because mm-hmm. I, I don't remember them being in the relegation season. Yeah, exactly. It looked like it looked like they had a comfortable lead all season. They were comfortable. And I didn't think, like, like you said last week, we didn't even mention them. Yeah, we are but you have goal. to remember that there was a time during the season that they went six straight games losing. I think that was when they sacked Robert Brett Murray in the final. So. And in total, they went like, they got like two wins in. They got two draws in nine games and the rest of defeats. So is that part of the scene that really caused them? Because at a point, like we said, it was all sunshine and roses. There was a run where they drew with Barcelona. They beat Atleti. And yeah, it was all looking great for them. Now, it's a sad relegation. Yeah, it's, it, honestly, it's a, it's a sad relegation for people. You look at Alaves, who got relegated, Levante, who got relegated, and Granada, and these are sides that have taken massive points from the top four, pretty much besides Real Madrid. I'm not sure whether it says much about what's at the top four this season or how good Granada have been on their day or the team like Levante and everything. Yeah, I feel it's a bit of boots because besides Real Madrid, the rest are top four, kind of like. Uh, kind of like between five points of each other in terms of their progress so far. And yeah, Gra- and you also have to credit Granada for taking results from these guys. Uh, yeah, it's all, it's all, but for a team in the relegation zone, it's more about what you do against the people around you. And besides beating, besides beating Mallorca, they didn't really do much against their rivals. Levante beat them recently. 
Um, they just managed to beat Alaves. They didn't get anything from Cardiff this season. And yeah, that those are the results that have pretty much doomed them. Yeah, and speaking of Cardiff, um, Lozano, he had a very good run for his goal. Mm-hmm. And what's changed? Like, what's changed from the time Sergio got this? When Sergio got this job, Cadet, they looked like a side destined for the team. Yeah. He changed the way the side played, he changed mm-hmm. their energy. And even today, without Ivan Alejo, who's been one of their star players, we're still able to get the job done. Yeah. It's been, it's been really good, the revolution that Sergio Gonzalez has done. I believe he also learned from his relegation of Real Valladolid last season, where his side were too conservative sometimes when they could have pushed forward or when they were like good in one half and bad in the next half. His Cardiff team have been pretty adventurous in, in the counter-attack and they've been actually fun to watch sometimes. It's just that their problem was that they have too many chances and they take too many chances to score a goal. Last week, it was obvious. This week, Negredo and Perez should have already scored earlier. But Lozano, like we said, who hasn't gotten a lot of game time under Sergio Gonzalez, is ironically the man that saves them from relegation. It's crazy how football works. Yeah, it's crazy how football works. Yeah, and even speaking of unlikely heroes, Clement Grenier, who yeah, had exactly. started the game, he scored the goal that pretty much sealed Mallorca's a safety. Yeah. And with Mallorca, after the 6-2 against um, against Perth, we didn't expect uh-huh. them to stay up. Yeah. I wasn't expecting them to stay up after that. I was like, Granada are going to kick on from here. Mallorca, they need a miracle to stay up because that defeat, the manner of the defeat was pretty damning. And Granada had the head-to-head on them too. But then, you know, that great last-minute winner by Abdon Pratt last week, whose goal now is historic like he was hoping, you know, yeah. was pretty important. And then today, the goal from Angel and the last one from Grenier have just sent Mallorca fans into delirium. And it's great that Mallorca have stability now. Like, they're not swapping um, position, uh, swapping divisions everywhere because for the last five years, they've been either in the third division, second division, or first division. They've never stayed in one place consecutively. So now this is good. This is progress for them. Yeah, it is. And with the, with the club, with what's going on with the American owners, it's nice for them to have like a somewhat stability in there <laughs> in this project. And it was a project where like when we looked at my on paper, at the start of the season, plenty of people who follow La Liga expected them to stay up because they believe that they signed well and everything. But it seems like somehow through the season, things just didn't click for them. Defensively, they couldn't buy a goal. Mariki came in and he revolutionizes. If those the person that I could say single-handedly in some ways saved Marika, I'll say it's him. Because his goals made such a huge yeah. difference. I mean, what a win exactly. He, he also assisted the goal for Angle, which was a beautiful goal, by the way. The two of them made quite a bit of one-twos in that move. And yeah, he's been the second or arguably first best signing in the um, winter market. It's between him and Aubameyang for me. He's yeah. just really taking Mallorca's attack to another level because while they were a bit d- defensively solid more than the other teams. They lacked goals and he's provided goals, threats. He's really good and I'm looking forward to seeing him more in the next season. Yeah, I am. I I hope they have they can because I, I believe it's just a loan. So I hope yeah. they can they yeah, can, I hope they can, they can make it permanent. Yeah. Because he has been, think, has been such a yeah. great addition. Mm-hmm. I think Mallorca have a decent amount of backing so hopefully they can at the very least, arrange another loan for him. Yeah. And with Abi Aguirre, what, what differences did you see in him in this side where he was able to keep Mark and the last time he came in as a fireman and he was not able to keep Leganos up? What was the difference in both? I don't think there's a huge difference in everything because he pretty much did the same thing he does every other time. He makes 
he basically takes teams back to basics. Okay, we have to defend, but we have to attack the so so and so way. We have to make his offset pieces crosses. I feel like with Leganes, it was there are just more a lot of things against them. But with Mallorca, he just came into his favorable situation because at least they had signed Muriki in the transfer window and had made one or two other additions that you know were able to keep them up. I just think that this Mallorca side has more quality than the Leganes side that got relegated three seasons ago. Oh, and they didn't have to lose Braithwaite in a yeah, city. That's a Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Oscar, yeah. Oscar stayed to the end. No? Yeah, he stayed, but he was injured for a while. True, 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 and true. I don't think he appeared again during the time of the season. Honestly, yeah. with that, like an side, I, I really felt just so many things went against them. They lost a lot of their best players. Yeah. And I remember in that final game where Oscar finally came back. Got that one chance to like score against Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sad when those things happen. <laughs> but yeah, yeah we're, we're Celta are the ones that deserve to be relegated that season, not them. Yes, no, yes, without without Celta, Celta were terrible. <laughs> and we will miss Granada for yeah. what they've done. It's it's hard to say what they do for the league in terms of the atmosphere. In terms of yeah, the, true. The Their fans are very passionate as well. You know, I won't miss the fact that they're a boogie team for Barcelona, but we still have cards <laughs> to deal with. But yeah, yeah, it's never nice to see any team go down, even if they are your greatest. Re- uh, nah, I'm not going to lie. I <laughs> great in Espanol go down three years ago. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's in general, it's not nice to see teams go down because it's the implications are really huge. They have to lose players. It's pretty, second, there's a pretty difficult place to come back from when you go down. You can ask. Almeria and other people, <laughs> and Girona. Yeah. That place is bad if you don't get up immediately. Yeah, it, it is. It is for sure. Mm-hmm. But we'll focus more on the higher echelons of the table. Where <laughs> seven, seven. Be excited! It, it, it wasn't played seven. Yeah, uh, Sevilla uh, played against Athletic. Barca against uh, the Real. Let's start in Sevilla Athletic first. Athletic they didn't get the seventh spot. Rafa Mir's goal pretty much showed any that they had. Mm. Um, with Athletic, would they consider the season a success or a failure? They got to the final of the Super Cup. They did okay. They did well in Copa del Rey. They, and they got to the seven. They got seven. Mm. In La Liga, they only fell short. The yeah. top seven are, are better than they are. Yeah. I, I feel it's a good season for Athletic because this is the first time in a long while that they've gone into match day 38 with something to play for. So I feel that alone is a positive. But, you know, it's still the same frustrations, like, you know, what if Iñaki Williams could finish or whatnot? And, you know, I had hope for Oyan Sunset, but it seems like he went off the ball through injury or loss of form. So you just hope that Athletic could so produce that young striker like Adiriz again or somebody. Because in midfield, they're producing a lot of good players and they're tying them down to long contracts. But you just, you know, they're just a 15, a double digit goal forward away from trying for Europe. And, and for and- Marcelino, yeah, who knows? Because one, one pre- president elect wants him, the other doesn't. So who knows yeah. what's going to happen? Yeah, the quotes from one of the presidents of that is that Marcelino is kind of my first choice for that last choice, which read read in between the lines. And if you're a coach and you're in this position, I don't, I wouldn't see myself wanting to stay. Yeah, uh, honestly, if I'm Marcelino and I'm getting a better job after where, you know, the co- the president or the people in charge actually wants me at work because. It's like he's done nothing wrong for Athletic, and yet his job is being under question. I personally don't think that's fair. Yeah, yeah, because with the limitations of this team, I'll say 10 is to be a success. Exactly. But what, what, what's his level, though? Because I don't think his level is an Athletic. I think maybe his level could be like Valencia, maybe Sevilla or Real Sociedad, but I don't see him higher than that. Of like leading to be in the top of the group. Yeah. 
And uh, I heard he's going to the Spain job after the World Cup, so we have to say about that. But what I know is that whoever gets him is going to get a pretty consistently good manager. Who this is his first season, his first full season, not finishing the top seven. So that alone is like testament to how good he is. Yeah, and he does it with a team with the limitations that Athletic. Yeah. And like you said, it's not like Athletic of several years ago when Munayan was still young, Athletic mm-hmm. was there, they had Societa, they had Iola. It's a totally, it's a team under construction. They're not, they're not as good as the ones mm-hmm. that are already. And for Athletic, if they were to lose Marcelino, who do you think would be good option to replace Marcelino in the back? Yeah, well, they could run this back and get Ernie Valverde, you know, <laughs> get, get him back. I'll just see that. D- do not do not get Azia Garitano back for any reason. Just stay with not Azia, sorry, Gaiska. Don't That's get right. Ga- don't get Azia Garitano either at all. No one should, <laughs> no one deserves that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel Valverde is an option. Diego Martinez is possibly an option I'd like to see take a the job of a stable mid-table La Liga team and see if he can get them into Europe. Yeah, he's linked to Espanyol, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, th- he'd be very good for Espanyol, I won't lie. It would actually make beating them fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, but in all seriousness, yeah, yeah, Diego Martinez is someone that would really improve a lot of the teams in the league. He, he will, for sure. Speaking of consistent managers, Julian Lopetegui, his third season in charge of Sevilla. Sevilla, they've finished in top four three consecutive seasons. They haven't done that since the 50s. Also, they finished the season above 70 points for three consecutive seasons, which I don't think they've done in the 21st century. So what's all the fuss about? Yeah. I mean, it's a great achievement, but you know, you'd expect more from, you'd expect Lopetegui to like try and take the next step and make this team play more braver, especially in Europe. In Europe, I feel like the next aim should be getting past the round of 16 and making it to what would be the only their second Champions quarterfinal ever. It's a tough ask, but you know, you are, if you want to improve, I feel like that's a goal. A reasonable a goal like you should try him for, you know, yeah. because Villarreal they are, are kind of like an inspiration for them because Emery got his first quarter final this last time, so you know, yeah, that's some that's an aim they can be like, hey, Villarreal can do it, why can't we? And also, yeah, if Villa can just freshen up the squad and try and maintain top four, that'll be good. Yeah, I'll, I'll say the frustration for Sevilla has been the fact that I don't remember them playing two consecutively good games. Yeah. Even the amount of games that they played, that you like, oh, oh wow, they played well, they're breathtaking. You can count them on one on one hand pretty much. Yeah. And that's and you see the group that they got in the Champions League. Although I think, unlike you, I think the group was somewhat tougher than Barcelona's group. But, bar and bar, I mean, but mm-hmm. It was a group that you would expect Soviet to finish. Yeah. If given the quality of players that he had, given the quality of players that the other teams, you would expect Soviet to finish. But they didn't. And I think that's the major criticism. And that was all before the interest came. So that's something that they need to work on, especially when they play against a team that presses very high and they go to a spot that's where I feel that's where. They really struggle. They really play out of press. Yeah. yeah they, if they can improve on those things, like you said, also, the, Sevilla's own transitions, I feel, need to be quicker because they are so slow sometimes. But yeah, if they can work on those things, we'll see a much better team next year. Yeah. Well. Well. And who do you think should start for Sevilla next year? Granted, they don't get a new striker. And a Syria ref in there, because at the beginning of the season, it seemed like, okay, and a Syria had this nailed on. But towards the end of the season, I'm thinking maybe Rafa Mir is a bit better off for this one. Both of them, 
both of them have their problems, honestly. I don't know. There's a part of the season where somebody, these are not my words, someone described my family's hold up play as being a flower vase. So <laughs> I don't know. If Sevilla can get somebody that's consistent because NSU was great last season and not so good this year. So if they can get someone who consistently gets 15 plus goals, that they can do that. But even if they if they can't, then I still say stick with I say stick with Rafa Mir for the start of the season. So you don't think Lucas Foyer will be a good option because he's we we've been happy with him over the past. But the one thing that comes to my mind when I think of Lucas Foyer is he doesn't have the goal outputs I'm saying to play for a club like Sevilla. I feel like from LT to Sevilla will be will be too big of a step up for Lucas Boyer. Uh, I mean, you, you never know until you try to, right? So, you know, if they can get Lucas Boyer and he's the, somehow, and he's the right profile for them, and that's great for them. But I don't really see it. Yeah, neither do I. But let's move on to Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona fans should start playing this watch again because every time I don't watch a game. They tend to lose. <laughs> and they lost to Villarreal. Yeah. This is the first time Villarreal has beaten Barcelona. In Since 2008. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean, crazy. I'll be honest, right? The game is a meaningless game for us. We've already been second. And, but the thing is that I don't care what any fan says. You never want to see your team lose, whether it's a friendly or a Champions League final. It's still, I was frustrated that we lost because I wanted us to end the season on the high note, you get. But at the same time, we have to put, you have to keep context in and everything in perspective. It's a game where I'm sure the players are thinking about what they're going to do for holiday. And Villarreal, like I said, have the team with more agency. Where I'm frustrated with the game is that the way we lost is pretty much similar to the other games we've lost at home this season, where we are dominant, we don't take our chances, the other team scores with their first or second chance, and the first or second chance they get comes from a mistake. It's the same formula that has limited us to not crossing the 80-point barrier for the last two seasons. So, you know, it's just a reminder that, hey, we need to fix that somehow. Whether it's getting better players and while working smart within the wage budget or just better coaching overall, because I don't see the need for Dani Alves to completely vacate the right back spot and play in defensive midfield and let Pedraza do whatever he wants to do there. I, but yeah, everything has to just keep improving. And it's important to remember that Barcelona is a work in progress. And, you know, we have a lot of work to do to catch Real Madrid next year. And what grade will you give Barcelona? You say it's a work in progress. But I'll say, given that... I'll, I'll say a B or B. maybe a B minus. The minus is taking into account that we went to the Europa League and we didn't win. But if I'm looking at domestically, I'd say given where teams were at the start of the season, how even me, who was normally positive, was like that, we probably won't make top four. I would say B. Yeah. But you know, I'll, I'll go. I'll go on ahead of you. I'll give it. I'll give them an A. You give it what? Yeah. I'll give an A. Oh, you're being kind on Barcelona. That's not like you. No, no, the reason I'll, I'll give them an A is because I'll say Barcelona, they, they've done really well compared to my expectations. And I, we said, I, I started seeing it, I was like, this is the worst Barcelona I've seen in my life. Obviously, they've improved squad given they brought in Abani and Ferran Adama and the transfer window. But to finish second, to improve rad radically the way Barcelona did, in, and in the games against the top opponents of the league, uh, where the things are actually in state. They really performed well. They performed mm -hmm. well in the Europa yeah. League to an extent until they ran time. But like there are some things, maybe the Frankfurt results, the way 
they sort of things sort of fits it out for Barcelona at the end of the season. But mm-hmm. given it's a young squad, it's a squad that's not not that that don't don't really have that much experience in La Liga. There's so many injuries that have starts like yeah. <laughs> we almost forget that back in December for them, Jutla and uh, Abdi. Jutla uh, Abdi and Eli Sakomak uh, were Eli's... main stri- main forwards. Yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been a long season, man. Yeah, so you can only be grateful that we finished in the top four pretty comfortably, and at one point even deluded ourselves into thinking we could catch Real Madrid. Remember when that was a possibility? Yeah, yeah, yeah with, with Laporta, everything. Yeah, Laporta's over optimism <laughs> being carried by the great work of Aleman in the transfer window. <laughs> Yeah, he he's been a revelation because, like, given where Barcelona were and where he's put them to, like, he's done a job. Yeah, it's yeah, he got yeah. Overall, I feel the best and most accurate thing you can say is that it's an improvement on last season. Besides, yeah. obviously, win not winning a trophy. In general, it feels like it's an improvement. So, hopefully, we can do that. And maybe apart from that track game, it's the way they went up when they lost at the Super Cup. Uh, they lost it with pride. When yeah. they lost um, to Athletic in the Cup, it was, yeah, the, it it was, was a game like, that was lost to pride. Mm-hmm. It's not like we went out like idiots like we normally do in Europe. Yeah. Like we went out with a bit of sense. For sure. We went out too, but yeah. <laughs> so true. true. And where, where do you, where do you, what will be success for this team next season? Do you expect them to maybe win the league, or would you say if Barcelona challenge Real Madrid and take it to the last city, that would be success? I would say the latter is more re- realistic because what we have to do is we have to cut down that, that one goal considered per game down. And with the defensive signings we've gotten so far and the ones we're linked, so I'm not too confident about that changing massively. So the other option is scoring more up front, which we can definitely should do. So depending on who we get, I would say challenging Real Madrid to the last day would be successful. And also trying to win the cup again and win the Super Cup and then in the Champions League, Okay, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I feel I feel Barca should be in at least the last season. Because... Yeah, la, la, we should try for a Champions League, we should really try for the last kids. But if we get a difficult team in the group stage and we finish second, it can't be helped. We never know when the Champions League. You like, never know. Uh, you never yeah, know. Yeah, we like and then the team that finishes up would be let's say mm-hmm. let's say Milan finishes up and like uh, City Barcelona doing one of those other pages. Yeah. So that's it. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Let's talk about Villarreal because Villarreal they formed a magnificent in the Champions League in the Copa del Rey. Less so in La Liga they were they were okay. But last time they finished in the semi-finals, of they also finished seven. So yeah, you, you could definitely say that see that the Champions League run took their focus away from the league a bit and. You know, the fact that they, well, they, like this game shows that against top teams, Villarreal are really good. Against bottom half teams, they have, the, they've had their problems and that's what's cost them in Europa League. But still, getting into a competition where you consider them favorites, along with yeah. the likes of West Ham and Fiorentina and who, who else is there? I can't remember off my head now. I but believe Cohn is yeah. there and uh, I think Nice is there. Yeah. All right. So, given the teams that are there, you'd expect Villarreal with Unai Emery's experience to win that competition or at least get to the final. So, that's another opportunity for Silverware. Provided they can also, you know, maintain a good challenge in the league. Yeah. And in the league, now that they would be, let's say, quote unquote, an easier competition where they'll be able to rest a lot of their players, mm-hmm. where where do you see what would be the focus for them for next season? Do you think they can break into that top four barrier? Because Valeria on the Emery, they've never finished in the top six. 
So actually, surprisingly, in Emmy in in I Emmy's three last last three Let Me Get campaigns, he's finished seven. So is it possible yeah. for that to finish in top rank, Challenge City and maybe Atleti? It's possible, but they have to do two things. Number one, okay, you have to two things have to happen. Number one, Jared has to be more fit than he was. Because when in the few limited appearances he had, Villarreal looked excellent. Against Liverpool for the 45, first 45 minutes, they really had them on the ropes because Mourinho was there doing what he does best. And I think they need to improve. The goalkeeping situation has to improve because they've lost at least 10 points from that department. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Especially, they could get Mama Dash really from there. So I'm giving that. They're going to be so nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if Peter Lim decides to do a pro, another promo, <laughs> and I won't get one free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let's let's move on to Atleti, Real Sociedad. Mm-hmm. And this was, I guess, nothing was really in stake in this game. Uh, with Atleti, we can say the same things that was said about Sevilla and Barcelona and it's a repeat for is their case a bit worse? Because they came into the season with the expectations of, okay, we've strengthened our squad, we've kept the same squad they wanted to get to Now let's go for the title again, let's go for the Champions League again. They really flopped in all three of the four competitions apart from the Champions League, where I'll say they did okay. Yeah. Yeah, in the Champions League, it was definitely a big improvement and a good season from Atleti. Because they got out of a very dangerous group and they got to the yeah. quarterfinals and just barely lost to Man City. But domestically, yeah, for me, defend, not defending the league in a proper way was, was disappointing because I felt that, let's see, besides not having enough centre-backs to play in the back three, were a better team than Real Madrid and the rest. But then that didn't pan out the inconsistencies between the forward players, like one week, one set of games is Korea, the next set is Jafix, the next set is Griezmann. No one really held that place down for themselves. In defense, you had the progress that Hermoso and Felipe and Savage made the last scene. They completely regressed back to clownish levels of defending. And another big thing was that All Blacks form massively plummeted this year because he went from being a world-class goalkeeper to being to being like Ter Stegen. Yeah, yeah, to be, yeah, to be, I'm not, I'm not insulting Ter Stegen. I'm just saying like two of them have basically been normal for the last year. In Ter Stegen's case, the last 18 months. But yeah, they've been normal. And to win the league, you need to have a world-class goalie. Like Courtois has won so many games for Real Madrid or has kept them in games long enough for the other players to make a difference. Oblak and Ter Stegen haven't done that and in Oblak's case it's even worse because he's actually made mistakes too which you could barely never say about him before. You could never associate him with mistakes. So he has to return to his old level and then Atleti they need to just be wise in this transfer window, try and get a striker, better defenders, and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, I think in like if they make a mistake and they get another like a let's on like the bottom, I think it's a big mistake. Because they can they can improve that's they can improve their spinning they can improve the sentences for sure. Yeah. They need to improve their wing backs in terms of the right. I think it maybe in the left, unless they sell Liddy, they should yeah. be okay, but Especially a right back because it doesn't look like Simeone trusts. Yeah, they don't have the right Versace. back, honestly. Versalco is their only real right back, and he's not, his fitness is always in question. So, yeah, Atleti need to really beef up set the right side of their defense, too. And another thing with Simeone, he needs to say, guys, we have this plan. Let's stick with it for most of the season because far too many times he has chopped and changed and it confused the players as well. Yeah, it did. Like, like you could tell what he's trying to do, let's say, like, we do a 3 5 4, four, four 2 but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, maybe that's why having Renegade was such a big 
for them because you exactly. saw we could make that transition from a three five two to a four to a four four two and Maria Mosso yeah. couldn't. So and their opponents rough sauce of that. Like I'll say in some ways they they're the kind of kid, like if you're a Rexner report, you say fairly recognizable, okay, not stuck mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. And that's that's the story of the team. We didn't yeah. really <laughs> recognize them. They didn't really make full up branches, but yeah, they are. They finished in top six again. Yeah, and they got they got the job done. I guess, like, I, I know we've had the discussion about him and all, and whether we'll just say I could get someone better. If there's someone better, you know, they could get him, but then at the same time, I don't feel him and all has done anything wrong. I do feel like I have the same thing with Sevilla that I have to do with Russo Zia. They need to make the next step pretty soon. Otherwise, they'll start going backwards. And that next step for me with Russo Zia that is, you know, trying to get do better in the Europa League yeah. and challenging for top four more consistently. Oh, where are the goals going to come from? Yeah, that's the thing because... The drop in Isaac's productivity was a shock to a lot of us this season, and you know they need you need that fifteen plus goal a season striker to really progress. So hopefully, Isaac this season was just a blip and he gets back to his level next year. And where Fabal comes back from injury and is his old self, Porto remembers how to score again. They. But if those don't happen, then they need to look at a transfer window and say, okay, who can we bring in that will just add new energy to the attack? Because I feel we're still starting to get a bit comfortable. And when you get too comfortable, you start you, you can you can never stay in the same place. You either go up or down. So you have to yeah, you have to try and improve the team, whether it's by improving the players actually or getting a new signing that will be like, hey. I'm here. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. And given the fact that the area and Betis who are sandwiched who they're sandwiched in between, we both think they're playing at a high level, they're gonna improve. Yeah. It just means that the feed is gonna be too hard for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause, yeah, every all the teams and I expect like the teams below real social with Ariel. To also try and start improving, to try and steal those spots from them. So, Russos, yeah, I'd have to keep moving forward, whether it's domestically yeah. or in Europe. Either one is fine. Both it would be excellent. That's question. Alkshay and Safe. Alkshay one three one, but with Alkshay, it's been again. It's a stellar campaign for a team that not much, not the big budgets. We expected them to stay up. They stayed up and they set up our concept at the end. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great season for Elche. Because, you know, I was kind of surprised that they sacked um, Escriba when they did because I thought he was good and he kept them up last year. But Francisco, like we said, has been amazing. And he's kept Elche up pretty comfortably. You can say the same thing about... Kike Sanchez Flores. Etafe, once they got out of the relegation zone, didn't look like they'd go back in. Yeah. He's like, and especially when you think of that, that when he came in, they hadn't won seven or eight games. Yeah. And he, the way he just changed belief in that club was something that's. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy he's been able to build his reputation. Yeah. And he turned yeah. Denis Unal into a goal scoring monster. <laughs> Yeah, he did, and hopefully, like, hopefully, he stays there. But we'll see where he ends up. Let's mm-hmm. let's run through a couple of scores as well. Valencia, Celta, and then this game for those that didn't watch, there was a massive protest, massive fan protest from Valencia fans who refused to go into the Messiah because of some of the audios for part of Valencia presence, which <laughs> it's another podcast on its own. But Maxi yeah. Gomez scored. Against his former club, and Iago Aspas is the Zara winner. Yeah, when was the last time he won it? I know Jared has won it in the last two years. 
think it was the year. Yeah, it was year, the year before. Yeah, yeah. But, mm, I think yeah, it was the year yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great like for us, but, you know, yeah. not like he's going to get him into a national team, but still, it's like another <laughs> feather to his cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, Valencia, the problems keep on. Yeah. It feels like. It was, uh, yeah, it just feels like they're preparing for mm-hmm. a season in La Liga Smart Bank. Yeah, honestly, that is like a masterclass on how to make a team that is one of the four or five best in Spanish history become a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it feels like a lot of players will go again this a game and for relatively and for like less than their actual value. You know? Yeah, I- I don't get what club who is having a sale decides to advertise to other clubs. Hey, our players are available. We need to sell them, and they expect to get like the price that they want. And, like, and that's that's it. Like, Another thing is that why do you have to sell all of these players at once? If you're wiser, you sell them one at a time so that you're not you get money while not completely compromising the strength of your team because yeah, that, after that sure. massive sale in was it 2020 you guys went from being in the champions league to looking over your shoulder relegation that's not right and it seems like the same thing right and it's just now but like yeah, they're so much closer to the relegation so mm-hmm. like because it, my number my number in second half of the season, I believe the answer is going to be in the So you would have to think that if things don't improve, mm-hmm. it could be even worse. But yeah. that'll I be th- a topic for another day. I don't think yeah, you guys will get relegated in the next two years unless Peter Lim really presses the self destruct button. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you never know. Right? It seems you never like, know. And you, you, you are, and, yeah, and you honestly hope not. But the, the Valencia team said goodbye to La Liga, but with a bang, it'd be Levante be right, like four two. Yeah. Uh, we'll miss Levante. We'll, yeah. We'll... It's good that Rayo still. Yeah, yeah, at least and we have one. Rayo to entertain people and take points off Preston again next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they 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 completed the season without seeing the goals. Oh, yeah. Another so, yeah. point of correction Barcelona have to make if they want to catch Real Madrid. <laughs> Real Madrid, when they go down, they don't usually lose stupid points to teams they should beat. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, I, it, it's a great season for Rayo to stay up against all the odds because they even got promotion against all the odds. And for Levante, hope to see them too. Sure, and Rayo. It is what it is. La Liga comes with La Liga clubs. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, everyone, we've been teasing everyone. Everyone's been waiting for it. Kylian Mbappe's almost new club, Real Madrid. They drew with the Real Betis. And um, yeah, let's speak about Mbappe's side because Mbappe's, uh-huh. did you see his message yeah. today? His message I didn't today. I see his like, message you know, today, was it? Oh, no. So his message was like, you know what, like, uh, I thank Real Madrid for trying to get me, like, I, I always, like, I Real Madrid, I would support them in the Champions League. That was, like, in his personal message. And it feels like, you know, when you go on a date with someone and then after that date, it's like, oh, I like you, you're a nice guy, but let's just be friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it felt. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't say that has happened to me before, but I get that it would be painful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like speaking from personal experience, from personal reaction of my brother who's a Real Madrid fan, I'm guessing eighty percent of them have blocked Kylian Mbappe on Instagram. <laughs> but honestly, with this whole team, I say I'll say that the media that acted like it was a done deal when the guy himself said 
I will make my decision at the end of the season. You can yeah. say, oh, Mbappe is a drama queen, but he said what he said and he stuck to it. He made the decision. People went and overplayed their hand by saying he's coming, he's coming. They said he was definitely coming in August. He didn't come back. Oh, he's a free agent now. We're putting, we're making Mbappe shirts. We'll, we'll boo our players and cheer Mbappe when he scores against us. We'll support the French national team against the Spanish national team because they have Mbappe. Well, it's funny how things turn out. Yeah, it, it is funny. And, and you're right. It's like even throughout the press conferences for Real Madrid from the time they got Paris Saint-Germain in the group mm-hmm. stages until in the last 16, Almost every press conference with Carlo Ancelotti was about Mbappe. Even when Vinicius was doing so well, was about Mbappe. And I feel that's such an insult to the current Real Madrid squad. Exactly. Because, because... given what they've done, given yeah. how hard they worked to get to where they are, given how spectacular a season they've had, mm-hmm. it's a lack of respect. Like Marco was like, Mbappe lacks us for not signing. Fair enough, that, that, that could be Marco's criticism, but I think they also lack us. They lack class. They are the same people that attack Bill every other day. Mike are in no position to say someone lacks class. And then you have people saying, oh, Mbappe is a coward, he's a little man. He's a, you know, words that I can't say on this podcast because we'll get the money (laughs) time. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, it's like, it's sour grapes from some some people in the Real Madrid sector. For the Real Madrid, but for Real Madrid players, I get they'd be upset that their club is being used this way because I know that for a fact that the likes of Benzema, Rodrigo, Vini, Modric, Valverde, they love Real Madrid from the bottom of their heart. You can see it through yeah. the way they play and everything. So obviously, it's going to annoy them. Their club Those Instagram is, posts were like coordinated, you know? You're so coordinated that they, you had Benzema putting a two pack picture. <laughs> that ended me, man. Because yeah. <laughs> Benzema was so sure Mbappe was going to come. Yeah. And we have to see. We have to see because a lot of people are saying the door is closed forever. I'm like, will you really reject Mbappe in three years' time no. if he's free and still one of the best players in the world? If you do yeah. that, then that's dumb. No, yeah, it's very. It's just like pride, right? It's yeah. if you reject Mbappe like in three years from now. The thing is. Mbappe is going to be 26 by the time this contract is, let's say, over. And it's a three-year contract, right? So he can leave in two years. Maybe he wants to throw a message for a senior year. Yeah. Try to win Paris Saint-Germain at the Champions League. Yeah. I think that's a worthy cause. Yeah. And more power to him. Yeah, if he comes to Real Madrid in two years' time, then you still have him for six, seven years where you can dominate with him. So mm-hmm. what's what's all the fuss about? Yeah. And you know, people will say money or oh, Mbappe is like a sporting director now, but you have to remember this guy, he's, he's Parisian and his family has to think about them. And like you yeah. said, winning your PSG's first Champions League is going to be such a great legacy for him. You know, yeah. but it, it knowing, how football, knowing how football heritage works, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. And just one more, one more point is that everyone is talking about Mbappe's contract and they're talking about like what Mbappe is promised by PSG from the same journalists who got the Mbappe story totally wrong. The same journalists got the Holland story totally wrong. The same yeah. journalists who get so many transfer stories totally wrong. The Messi one totally wrong. So it just shows what do they know? Not yeah, what, what does anyone really know until the fine print is done? Done, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I was always like, I was always of the opinion is that until Mbappe is holding the Real Madrid shirt, he's not your player. So stop putting him on your profile pictures or whatever, and stop spamming turtle emojis, Mister JFD. I'm not going to say his full name. <laughs> I am so yeah. happy that yeah. My, so, someone said that I'm celebrating this as if Barcelona won a trophy. I'm like, it's a trophy because if Mbappe came. This league would have turned into the Bundesliga. Yeah, it's, it's over. It's over. It will have been and, over. Like, there's nothing we could have done. Yeah. At least and, next yeah. season, we can count on the fact that Real Madrid don't know how defend big titles and say, okay, we have a little hope there. Yeah. But yeah, 
Yeah, and as for Real Betis, you know, you know, the end of an, a great season for them. And I feel like, Fantastic. unlike the other teams around them, Real Betis are definitely trending in the right direction. The other teams are not trending backwards, but they are more like stagnant, if you get me. Yeah, I'll say the only word for Betis is I've heard that they has one, they'll have to make one big sale. And that could mm-hmm. be either William or Guido. I think if they have the trips in the you know, I'll go with sell William. Yeah, I'll sell and William if I have the trips. Yeah, and because I think they, they plan to replace some of so they can get some of the and around the say That's yeah, I'm not sure whether that'll be a full upgrade, but that's like more or less the same type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And for Real Madrid, like just to go back to them, Champions League final next week. How does that how does this affect them? I feel like they should, regardless of whatever, like they shouldn't let any rumor or speculation affect their preparation for the game. They should just go in and, you know, focus on the win. And if they do win, then feel free to banter Mbappe or cuss him out or whatever and say, hey, we this is what you're missing out on or whatever. But until then, just focus on the game. You know, you have a very tough team ahead of you, you know, and... Yeah, from a fitness standpoint, everyone is more or less okay. Alaba is the big doubt. And yeah, I, I don't know if training him back in for a game of this magnitude would be wise. Yeah, but you know, with Spanish teams, they always like to do this. Like a player comes back from injury and he's, uh, back he's, definitely, the he's definitely going to play. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, Liverpool, they've been chasing the Premier League and they lost it today for beating this mm-hmm. debate. They weren't just they weren't able to get it. Um, Real Madrid, they've sort of been chilling in La Liga. Do you think that's a positive for Real Madrid, or do you think that's going to be a negative for them? I would have said it was a negative, but the thing is that Real Madrid took at least two of their last four games very seriously. So I'd say they are more or less still in the mindset of we have to win this thing, and obviously it's. Real Madrid in a Champions League game. They know they have to take it seriously. Otherwise, their fans are going to overreact and forget that they won the league. That is true. Uh, let's move to the Premier League since we're talking about Liverpool. And it was quite spectacular in the last game of the season. There was a hit with both teams, City and Liverpool, going for the title. Mm. Both went behind. City went behind by two goals, Liverpool by one goal. And Spectacular comes back. The one from yeah. City, especially eight goal, like three goals in eight minutes or something crazy like that. Yeah, three three goals in eight minutes. Yeah, it was a great comeback by City because once I saw they were two 0 down, I'm like, oh damn, <laughs> Gerard is finally banishing the ghost of 2014. But then, <laughs> yes, I'm not. I, I was going to sing a song, but my voice is kind of cracked, so I'm I'm not going to that. But basically, it happened again. A little small, little <laughs> slip here or there. One wrong substitution of Coutinho and yeah, City win the league, and which was very important. They won the game, and Liverpool also came back, so they knew that they had to win the game. Otherwise, Liverpool would have won, been one more step from winning a quadruple. Yeah, <laughs> and with with City, it's perhaps fourth league, and it's almost like domination season, isn't it? Yeah. Feels that way. I can't remember the last time like, a team dominated England in this way. One team since I Besides Sarah, like Alex Ferguson. Yeah, uh, Pep. Pep Guardiola has won, I think, nine of his nine of the 14 league titles he's contested for in his career. I might be wrong. But he's won. Okay, let me see. He didn't win it in 2012. He didn't win it in 20. 20 in 2016 and in 2020. Actually, that's 11 out of 14. <laughs> I sold him right too short. Yeah. But, but why do you think he hasn't um, made a step in the Champions League? It's just a number of things. Sometimes it's his own over eagerness to try and make sure everything is perfect. This last time, I didn't feel it was really his fault. I felt like the players let him down more than he let himself down. 
But in other times, you could say, yeah, for sure, it's his fault because I remember, remember at Champions League final that he decided not to play defensive midfielder. You know, yeah. What was that about? Or against Leon in a relatively straightforward game where he played three defensive midfielders. <laughs> yeah, he changed the tactics for Leon. Yeah, honestly. Only God knows what goes on in that guy's head. <laughs> yeah, but well, next year when it gets Holland, it's going to be so much more. Yeah, they'll be they'll have an actual option up front, but then he was going to play him as center back in the round of sixty. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know what happens. Maybe maybe he does well in that. And with with Holland signing, right? I, and I know the season is still far away. Next season is still far away. Can anyone stop that? In England, probably not. Europe. What about Europe? I mean, in Europe, anything can happen. Like City dominated Real Madrid for most of that tie, and Real Madrid only took the lead in that tie when they were like twenty-five minutes of play to go. So <laughs> anything goes in Europe, honestly. You can have all the star players you want, but if all of them have enough there at the same time, you can't help it. The EPL stuff for is made up of not just City and Liverpool, Chelsea and Spurs, who yeah. they won very big yeah. in the final, uh, the final game. Yeah. Both Arsenal and Spurs won really big, but to be honest, this top four race was set when Arsenal, from a commanding position, blew three consecutive games against mid-table teams. So they have to, they can only blame themselves for not getting back to the Champions League for the first time since 2017. And the way it continues, I I feel I kind of feel sort of like I'm happy for yeah. Antonio Conte. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm more happy for Conte because the guy went into a job that's not easy. <laughs> because you know Tottenham fans we all know their complaints about the ownership and the lack of, and the way they let one of the best squads they had in a long time just stagnate. Yeah, so, you know, it's been interesting to see how they do next season. Yeah. And moving on to Italy, which was another league with Asians, to race. AC Milan, they got the job. Yes. Six in a row. Milan's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Pioli's on fire, yeah. Inter Juve are terrified. Pioli's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. For, I'm so happy for Pioli. Like he's he, since coming in 2020 January, he's really changed AC Milan so much that they avoided getting the great Ralph Ragnick. <laughs> Imagine if he got him. Yeah, um, and and you know what? At a time like people on football Twitter, they criticized that they were like. That shows how backward Milan is. Like the guy that brought Nick is really up for some Italian like there. <laughs> it's funny what we know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great achievement for Milan, in all honesty. You know, massive goals all season long from Giroud, from Rafael Leal. Great defensive work by Magnan, Tomori, Kalulu. Calabria, and yeah, they've gotten the first Scudetto in 11 years. And Inter, you know, Inter didn't win it, but they still had a very good season, in my opinion. They just fell short at the end. Yeah, and, and it's good to see, because for those of us who, like, we've followed the league even when it went down a bit, like, it's nice to see the Milan clubs back yeah. where they should be competing for titles, yeah. winning titles, and everything. Okay. Yeah. They are not the the two Milan teams aren't vintage by any means, but it's still great progress to see them do well and you know hopefully they can do better in Europe and you know be, yeah be consistent like getting top four and whatnot. Because yeah. Milan will be in the top seed for next season, so yeah. that that's only strengthening their cause. We we'll, we might see maybe more talented teams go to the last season. Because what's held, I would say, Italian football back somewhat in Europe is that they come to the Champions League and they're not, they don't have very high seats. So some of them are seated in third seat or fourth seat. Uh, and when you're true, third true. or fourth, you get 
you could get like two more decisions with you, like Milan, Gods, yeah. Atletico, Liverpool, Porto. So all three are difficult to bring on. So it's good uh, for Syria. It, it, it is. It's 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 awesome, and it's a, it's a league that's been very, and it's grown like not with the superstar signings, but just the tactical. Yeah, I can see that, and then I hope just go back to Spanish football. I hope Spanish football can like take a leap out of that and see that you don't necessarily need the multi multi star skill. You can grow by just implementing nice tactical changes and yeah. That's what Serie A has done because they don't have the same money that Madrid or Barcelona had in Spain or most of the top teams have in England. So it's it's nice that they grow in that. Do we move on to Germany? Yeah, let's go to Germany. Where it's everybody's Germany, favorite team won the DFB <laughs> Leipzig. Honestly, I was rooting for Leipzig in this game. I was like, it's supposed to be being contrary. Yeah, it's I fine. I, 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 I wasn't really with if I know in particular, but when I saw that Freiburg had taken them to extra time, I was like, like you know, I hope Freiburg can win. But then they a couple of awful penalties, though. Yeah. We, we, we can see lots of penalties these days. I, yeah. And I was thinking about this when this was, so I wonder how many times the game, when the game goes to extra time, we actually get an extra time. We go on in Copa Italia for sure, but. Yeah. I think that's more the exception. And just a mini rant, maybe we don't need extra time. Honestly, that that could be something that we could start applying, to be honest, because some of the extra times basically feel like both teams are just essentially playing for the penalty shootout. So you might as well just get straight to it, you know? Yeah. And, and two, two players, going back to this game, two players stood out in the attack for Leipzig. Was cool. No one's going to stay in Leipzig for a long period of this time. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting to see how if, Leip, how, if Leipzig can be able to keep hold of some of the players they have. But it's very likely that Mikele is going to go guard, guardial. Sorry if I'm saying this wrong. May probably have many suitors because he's a young left-footed defender. Same thing with Nkunku. He's definitely going to go. It's just a matter of who is going to get him. But yeah, Leipzig seem to be heading on the right track, honestly, because they're the. It's like it's great for German football, basically seeing other teams beside Bayern win silverware. And I believe they're the first East German club to win a team in Germany over 50 or 60 years. And it's their first mm-hmm. major team for this one. And yeah. a moment, so I'd like to give a couple of thanks to Dominic Tedesco because when he took over from Jesse March, who kept me up today, um, Leipzig were, were, they were sort of mess because a lot of things were expected from Jesse March, like wrong, maybe a bit unfairly because they had lost the two best sides. The best midfielder, but Tedesco was taking the club. He reformed them. He got them to the European semi final. He got them to win the DFB Pokal and they finished in the support, albeit by a small margin. Yeah. yeah. Given where Leipzig were, like some sometime in the like October, November, the decisions turned out pretty well for them. And this is their first trophy ever, so you know, congrats to them. And then, and a word for Freiburg, who they they were like the nearly team in German football. Yeah. Was they could have they could have won the, they could have been in top four and they could have got to yeah. the DFB Pokal. Yeah. It's they sad. still were so great. Yeah, it's yeah. sad. It's still... Yeah. Yeah. The new never cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, Ranger Rangers felt like the neighbor who's in the Europe League though, uh, against Frankfurt. Yeah. Massive congrats for like the first yeah. German team, not made by Ranger. It's winning yeah. Europe since '97. It's huge. Yeah. It's a good uh, congratulations to Oliver Glasner because he 
his tactics, he got them pretty spot on throughout the whole tournament. Frankfurt, did, like Villarreal last year, did not lose a single game, which is not easy at all in this day and age. So, congrats to them. You know, you know, we lost this Frankfurt super team, so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to be in Champions League Frankfurt, and um, it seems like they've already lost up to Bayern Munich, and Bayern Munich, who they took on Schlotterberg from Freiburg as well, who seemed like a very good game. So, hey, sorry, not Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. No, Dortmund, I was wondering, I was like, you. Sorry, sorry. No, it's not for Schlotterberg, I'm just talking, my bad. Uh, mm-hmm. So, it's like, I'm trying to already... It seems like maybe they might lose some players. So how well do you think they would do in the Champions League if when they're there? At the same time, they're going to get a lot of money from like win from like you said, win the Europa League and sales. So if they can, you know, just be wise about who they bring in and um, stick true to the identity that Oliver Glasner has given them, they could be an interesting team to get out of the Get a, get a round of 16, depending on who's in their group. Frankly, I want to play against them again and just <laughs> get some... I need some closure. Yeah, and, and maybe this time, maybe at 11, 11 Disney, it's actually far slow. Yeah, if you, yeah we, can, we can... If we get the <laughs> destroyer of Bundesliga teams, he might help us. Yeah. And my massive congrats to them. Some materials mm-hmm. for Rangers. They won't be qualified for Champions League directly, but they can still qualify for the playoffs. So it'll be nice to see both start the season. I'll be honest. Yeah. It's, it's nice it's nice to see more diversity than those teams from the top five leagues. So yeah. It's, we've kind of lost that in the Champions League in the last few years. And, and that's what made the Europa League special, right? You yeah. get to the semifinals, and it's you get teams, a team from Scotland, a team from, like, a team from Germany, a team from mm-hmm. England, or even in the last eight, the diversity that's there is really mm-hmm. nice to see. Yeah. yeah, let's move on to yeah. League uh, And we already spoke about PSGG after Mbappe signed to at the score the hat trick. The Maria said goodbye, they won the uh, <laughs> but in, in, uh, in other news, Marseille, they finished the Champions League for a big, yeah. big one for Marseille with Paoli and with Spurgeon Gregor, who are not people who fans of Spanish football. Yeah, they, they, they've done a good job. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's great to see Marseille back in Europe's top competition because they are one of the biggest clubs in France. That goes without saying, so it's nice to see them back. Um, probably who finished third again? I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, Monaco finished third. Yeah. Monaco. Now hopefully Monaco can, you know, win their playoff game this time and join them, and we have three French teams. Yeah, that that'll be that'll be something special to see. Rennes, like they're they the one thing that surprised me about Rennes is that they're one of the top scorers in the league after PSG. They scored 82 yeah. goals in this league, which is insane. They'll be in the Europa League. Nantes, as we've spoken about before, they won the top. Oh, they'll be in the Europa League. Yeah, they'll be yeah. in the Europa League. Nice on their Galtier, they finished fifth. And that's the conference league spot, I believe, in France. So yeah, they'll be in the conference league. Yeah, and that wraps it up for uh, our European football tour. Let's bring it back against Spanish football. Congrats to Karen Benzema, GG, and my friend Bono and Miss Amora. So, yeah. Yeah, congrats to them. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Congrats to you, Oscar, for being such a loyal co host in this podcast. And thanks for so much. Congrats to you for having me. And yeah, yeah. we'll be back next week to celebrate Real Madrid not winning the Champions League. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what, about what's that. Your, what's your score prediction for the podcast? My score prediction. Real Madrid will win on penalties after scoring the last minute goal in the 90th minute. Yeah, pretty you know, much. I'll, I'll try to be contrary, yeah, and I'll go 1 0 Liverpool. 1 0 Liverpool. Uh, okay, okay. I still see Real Madrid scoring at least one. Day. Especially if Van Dyke isn't ready for that game. So. Or Thiago. 
but Thiago is on injury doubt. Yes, yes. Okay, I changed my mind. Madrid, Madrid 3 1 win. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see who's right and who's wrong next week. But, anyways, enjoy the rest of your week, guys, and enjoy the finals that we're going to see here at the Adios, everyone. All right, man.